Hi everyone. Nat 113. And today is the 27th. And so <clears throat> we are in week 9 already. Wow. Alright. My first point was <clears throat> we get students who think they really know technology and they do some are, are very good at the details not a lot some are details I can tell when I look at work though by the students like checking this last test some of the answers you could tell the student really tried to sort of guess when the information was pretty clear in the text so they either forgot or they didn't read the text. Okay? Unless you really know it for sure, <laughs> you need to read the text. And there's not a lot of outside stuff to do for this class. So that was always the one thing. Make sure you go through the material and the text and then the reviews and all those things. Next thing we did today was we took the practice test. Then we talked about hard drives and storage. I'll go over that here in a little bit. And then spent a lot of time on the lab testing some things. They did a lot with hard drives and other devices. And they set up they set up a new version of Linux today also on the machine so they could work with that. So let's take a look at then what we talked about. When I first did computing, a lot of information was stored in cards. They had these little paper tapes with holes in them, and the light would shine through the hole and represent a bit or not a bit. Okay. Then we made, then we went to tape. Well, we went from paper tape. I should go down here and tape. Put magnetic spots on it. Then pretty soon we were able to make a platter have a hard drive and have a platter spin and we put the magnetic spots on that. And down here I was talking about this is kind of crazy but we used to have these um, a lot of the first um, when uh, PCs started to get a little bit smaller and when they first got hard drives in them they had a couple floppy drives. People used the floppy drive to store information or if they had an app they wanted to run that didn't fit on the hard drive, or the computer didn't have a hard drive, but the ones that had these hard drive and floppy, they take the floppy out and lay it up here. People were finding that the magnetic motor spinning the hard drive was damaging the data on the disk, so they people started saying, Don't put it on top of there. Alright. Anyway, whether that's rumor or just a good story, the information is stored magnetically and so magnets can be an issue. Or just over time that information disappears. This is a great way to store stuff though. We put it on platters, we put it on tape. Ask the students, where is tape still used? Well, a lot of places still do their backups to tape. I couldn't tell you exactly how many. We talked about solid state. It's really cool the new solid state drives. We've been using flash drives and so forth for a while, but the new solid state drives are really cool. Uh, issue with that is when you write to the drive, it has a finite number of writes. You should be able to read it all you want, but finite number of writes. It could be a pretty big number, but it is finite. So eventually, like if you have a thumb drive, eventually it will not retain the information, so to speak, because it has a finite number of how many times you can write to it. And you can look that up for the drive before you buy it and so forth. Now, so some people say, well, magnetic, those magnetic spots, if you take good care of it, won't go away. Well, what's the other problem here? It has moving parts and moving parts wear out. They wear out. 
platter spinning, the read write heads coming across there, the mechanical part of it wear out. Optical, we burn those spots into the disc. Pretty reliable, you know, as far as um, magnetic field won't change them. Um, so that's, that's uh, pretty reliable. A little slower in most cases, slower to read, read and write. But it's a great type of storage. We talked about most everywhere SATA. Then we looked at over here, we talked about the hard drive, the tracks, divide those into sectors. Typically you store the same amount in the sectors. And then we got talking a little bit about this. So somebody's writing and writing and writing, and all of a sudden there's another file there. So they have to jump over here and write. And then it creates that link between them. That's called fragmentation, a fragment. And, you know, the hard drive gets fragmented. So people have to defrag hard drives. And as a hard drive gets full, if it gets too full, it's pretty hard to do that because it doesn't have any words to rewrite the data. Nowadays, hard drive space is so big and the cost has come down so much that a lot of people don't worry about this. But you can set your system up to defrag in the evenings, you know, once a month or every night, or however you want to do that. All right. Oh. Over here we talk file allocation tables, so you understand somewhere in one of those tracks there is a table that keeps track of, keeps track of where everything is. When you do a directory on that information, you'll see a list, and those lists, those file names, point to the location on the hard drive where the files are, and that's kept in the directory. All right. Redundant array of independent disk or inexpensive disk. This is for fault tolerance. This is not, it's not for backup. You know, if we put multiple disk hard drives in a computer and it's either to increase volume, you know, how much you can store, plus it can also be good for fault tolerance, build redundancy. Okay, so RAID 1, it just builds a mirror. So everything it puts here makes a copy of it here. RAID 0 just fills one and goes to the next and so forth. RAID 5, and there's, there's categories in between, and we don't have to worry about RAID 5. It would like strip this, and then it keeps a parity set so it stores some, so it has the ability to <clears throat> if you had to remove a drive when you put a new one in it is able to rebuild that drive it keeps enough information distributed in the drives to be able to rebuild a drive okay it's not actually creating a mirror but it keeps enough information so you can swap a drive in and out Typically for RAID 5, you should, um, you really can only swap one drive. So if you have three, you swap one. Even if you had four or five drives, you only swap one at a time. RAID 6 supposedly allows you to swap two at a time, but I'm not sure all the details on that. <clears throat> all right. And then the students, the students for the lab, they did a lot of work. They um, opened up machines, um, you know, check, did a, <clears throat> actually, they, uh, Linux, some did Ubuntu, some did Fedora workstations. They got Linux on it. They test the machines, made sure they work, removed cables, checked errors, and then we finished up, finished up putting um, two drives in a machine and set that up. 
We're going to see if we have enough time on Tuesday at least look at raid. I don't know. And then we have the rest of the items to finish on Tuesday and the chapter final for chapter 6 final test will take on Tuesday also. And the labs are due next week. That's it.